A company in Syracuse is finding solutions to help keep schools safe after the mass shootings that we have endured. Of course, the most recent one in Texas that took the lives of 21 people, 19 of them children. CBS 5's Allura Lagarde shows us. Armored One is an active shooter program designed to help schools K through 12. One of the founders here in Syracuse, part of that program is helping schools install this special glass designed to keep everyone safe. This looks like regular glass, but with a key difference. The armored glass is created to look like a regular window, but is stronger. Co-founder Tino Amade gave me a brief demonstration. Glass is the easiest way into any type of building, car, whatever it is, that is the easiest way to break into something. Amade says Armored One was created right after the school shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary. Between then and the school shooting at Robb Elementary, he says it seems like nothing is changing. We did say as a society that we wouldn't let this happen again. My reaction has really changed over the years. Um, I went from, you know, I can't believe this is happening, I'm really sad about the situation, to just getting really frustrated that it, we have this time that we know this is happening and we're still letting it happen. So Armored One started coming up with ways to strengthen school security, making it more difficult for people to get inside. To give you some more perspective, Amade gave me a bat to hit the glass. I took a couple of swings and the glass didn't shatter shooter glass that's more affordable. It's designed for K through 12 schools um, and it allows these schools to finally uh, put something in place in the most vulnerable area to slow down an attacker, giving those teachers, those students more time to react and be able to save their own lives. He adds it's now up to the schools if they want to be proactive and install the Armored One protective glass. I think they'll start to learn that it's not that hard to put a plan together and to create some some things that they can do now because there's a lot of products, there's a lot of training that they can do now um, that has been proven to work for schools versus, you know, hoping that, you know, maybe legislation would do something or maybe some of our government leaders would do something. In addition to installing safety measures at schools, Armored One is also providing training to school staff to help them keep schools safe. As parents in Uvalde, Texas, continue to mourn loved ones and discussions over gun control and safety in schools continue, tonight we're asking those who have to go to school every day if enough is being done to keep them safe. Our Laura Lagarde has our Crisis in the Classroom coverage tonight. We've heard from schools, experts, and other adults about the shooting in Uvalde, Texas. But one group we've had yet to hear from are students. Today, I was able to speak to two Central New York students here at the March for Our Lives protests in Syracuse. For right now, I would like to center our focus on the impact of gun violence on schools and students in our community and across the nation. Zafron Kadali was one of the student speakers at the March for Our Lives rally in Syracuse. I spoke to him and fellow student JJ Braveman about why they came out to speak about gun laws. Having guns around is not helping uh, students, you know, become the leaders that we need them to become. Families around Syracuse are already dealing with enough. We're dealing with problems. We're dealing with food insecurity. We're dealing with economic insecurity. We don't need to be dealing with guns in our schools, too. Kadali says school is supposed to be a safe haven for students, not something they fear. He even admitted he's scared. That schools have now turned into potentially the most worrying and stressful and most fearful places for young people to be. What if I'm next? What if my friends are next? What if my you know, friends in other states are next? Dozens of people at the rally were calling for stricter gun laws and for politicians like Claudia Tenney and John Katko to address it. Braveman says after he heard about the shooting in Uvalde, Texas, he was sad, but also frustrated, asking himself, why does this keep happening? Picture being scared, terrified under your desk from gunfire. Picture yourself in the position of an elementary school student, not sure if they're going to be able to make it home or do anything else with the rest of their lives. Kadali and Braveman both say it's important to have these laws because students and staff deserve to feel safe without having to worry if there will be a shooting at their school. If we want to honor those that have died and if we want to prevent them from happening again, we need to make a change. While these students are happy that gun laws are stricter in New York State, they say there needs to be tougher gun laws across the country so every child feels safe in schools.
Good morning and welcome back to Weekend Today in Central New York. I'm joined again this week by Lieutenant Malinowski with the Syracuse Police Department. Lieutenant Malinowski, thanks for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So I understand the department was enforcing an ATV detail. What can you tell me and what was that for? Uh, sure. So this is one of the biggest complaints that we receive in uh, Syracuse is the um, illegal riding of ATV and dirt bikes. Now, most people say, don't you have anything better to do? Um, isn't there something else the police department should be doing? But this is one of the biggest complaints that we receive from our residents. Um, ATVs are not only dangerous to ride around. Uh, people will take them on sidewalks, weave in and out of traffic. Um, it's also the sound. It's a really a quality of life issue. So, um, again, we hear you. We know that's an issue. So we'll have a proactive team of officers that actually go out there and we'll try to track these ATVs down, find the location, um, ticket the drivers, and then tow the vehicles. And the thing that's unique about this one is that once we tow that, there's a several thousand dollar redemption fee for them to actually get the ATVs out. So once we actually get those ATVs secured, it's hard for people to take them back out and ride them in the streets. So Most people are... Sorry. Sorry. So people are driving around the city of Syracuse like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah. you guys, you guys found some success, and you were able to, you know, get some of these ATVs off the street. Uh, yes. Yep. So we'll usually post it on our social media, and you can see some of our results. Uh, the biggest thing that people ask is how they can help. If you know where these ATVs or the dirt bikes are actually being stored, so if you know the exact house, it's in the backyard or in a shed, something like that, getting us that information is, is huge because we really don't do a lot of car chases with them, so we need to know where they're actually parked so we can go to that location and, and secure them. All righty, and what's a tip you would give a local business from the law enforcement perspective? Uh, one of the most important things that we always uh, try to let our business owners know is, especially at night, so lighting, making sure that your business has adequate lighting at night. And then cameras, that's one of the biggest things, especially in this kind of 21st century policing. We put up more and more cameras as the days and years go on for the citywide, but having those cameras on your businesses. So if something does happen, you're able to get that footage over to us, and then it really aids in our investigation, having a picture of the suspect that we can get it out to other officers to see if they can identify. But lighting and cameras is one of the biggest things. And then any tips you would have just for a regular local community member? Uh, well, that's another one. So, again, with the cameras, we really can't stress that enough. We're a big fan of cameras here and, and, and policing. We've seen the success of those. So if residents, I know it's a little bit expensive, but if you can get one of those kind of ring video doorbell cameras, you're able to uh, record your property. When you're not home, you can see who's on your property. And, again, God forbid something happens, you're able to get that footage over to the police department and help with an investigation. And now they're really linking up different neighbors that have cameras together. So you're really creating community. So if you see something suspicious, you can alert your other neighbors, hey, there was someone up on my porch, uh, be advised, he's going door to door, something like that, um, and really working together as a community to try to solve some of these problems.